found your way to the newest show here on KFAR. We call it Patriots Lament, and it's right here. For the next hour, we are going to be talking about issues that have to do with liberty. Joining me in the studio is your panel of hosts here. We've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. We've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical, and today we also have Dave Giesel. Dave, who shall I see you're with today? Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty. There you go. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. It's all yours. Thanks, Steve. How are you doing today? You know what? It's a beautiful day out there. <laughs> it is pretty nice. I think we're going to start off talking a little bit about our buddy Ron Paul and the national stuff with Congress. And I think our jackhole of the week is going to go to all of Congress today. They uh, finally got a little bit of guts to call Obama on the table about uh, Libya two weeks, well, three months after the fact. Uh, they came out with a resolution that said that Obama should, they gave him two more weeks to come to Congress and fess up with what's going on in Libya, which is amazing. And the fact that Congress didn't do their job in the very beginning, they should have stepped in and said they, the president had no right to attack Libya without authorization authorization from Congress from day one, not day 50, 60, 70, 90. Um, Democrats were on board. A lot of them were. Dennis Kucinich is uh, someone that's pretty much very socialist in his views, but very uh, right on the money as far as when it comes to declaring war or going to war using our soldiers in war without approval from Congress, which is, oddly enough, what the Constitution requires. We have uh, I lost it. another thing we have is uh, the debt ceiling. Mr. Boehner now is saying that he'll go along with raising the debt ceiling again, but he wants cuts. We have to cut money from whatever we raise it. We want to see some financial cuts on the other side, which we all know that will never happen. Our good buddy Ron Paul stepped in and said just that. Quit spending the money. Don't raise the debt ceiling, which is exactly what needs to happen. Yeah, when they do propose cuts, they're always um, after they're out of office. Like, the, the cuts will be over the next 10 years, right? And in 10 years, the budget will be balanced. But in the meantime, you keep... Well, it never will be, obviously. It's a shell game. But they'll keep stacking up... Uh, debt in the meantime. You know what I don't understand about this whole situation is how nobody seems to be able to put it to uh, the practical nature of if it were on our own households. You know, I, I can't just go out and raise the debt ceiling for my house. If I'm spending too much money, I well, first and foremost, I've got somebody who keeps me accountable. My wife says, honey, you're spending too much. You don't have legal authorization to steal or counterfeit either, though. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. So, I mean, but but I mean, what do, what do we do though? I mean, in light of uh, the fact that we have a Congress who's willing to continue to spend money we don't have. Well, I think it shows what we've been saying all along is that uh, there is no division. There's no difference between the two parties. They're the same thing: tax and spend, tax and spend. That's all they do. And another interesting thing with that, I think, if we look at our buddies over across the ocean, the Chinese. They're obviously wisening up. I saw earlier that they have divested 97% of the U.S. Treasury bills. They used to hold $210.4 billion in May of last year, and now they only hold $5 billion. So what do they know that Congress doesn't know? Obviously that uh, the continuing spend, 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 it, mathematically it has to end someday. And when it does, crash. Exactly. Yeah, technically, the Federal Reserve can come in and buy treasuries. I mean, the, the game is up when um, people stop buying treasuries or governments or whatever. As long as they can sell debt, they can continue to finance whatever spending they want. So that will be that will be the breaking point more than any you know specific deficit number. But the Federal Reserve has said it's going to stop quantitative easing in June. But that doesn't look like that's going to happen. Employment numbers came out yesterday, and they were, quote-unquote, disappointing, just like every other economic statistic that's come out in the last three months. 
you know, or unexpectedly disappointing. Unexpected to who? Right. So so whether QE stops or not, it, it probably won't. They'll probably um, continue on with it. Maybe call it QE three. But as long as someone's buying Treasuries, there's a uh, there's a market now. Obviously, when the Federal Reserve starts buying them, then you just get straight up price inflation as a result. I saw that uh, with the job market, the news that came out with how many new jobs were created or whatever, that McDonald's held exactly half of those new jobs. So that's some real wealth creation. Nothing against people that work at McDonald's, but I mean... Well, the, the whole point about McDonald's is that it's not... I mean, it's great for people who want to have a part-time job or who don't have a family to support or don't have bills, but you you cannot make a living on McDonald's wage. And that's not to say that, oh, well, the government ought to step in and make McDonald's pay a living wage. <laughs> and they need to, they need to pay more. And well, what it means is that uh, there just aren't the jo- the higher payer jobs out there anymore, and people need to rethink their lifestyles. Well, it'd be nice if the Congress would rethink rethink their lifestyle before they have us rethink ours. You know, it's really interesting to me. You can kind of see how uh, revolutions happen, like communist re- revolutions. People are broke, out of jobs, don't have anything going on. And you have your leaders, which we have just like right now, living high on the hog, flying around. See that Boehner and uh, the president are going to be having a golf game next week. They're both avid golfers. So they're going to go have a little golf game together while the uh, people are starving to discuss their differences and try to make things happen. So basically what we have is they played fiddles while Rome burned, and we played golf while America burns. Yeah, the only uh, counties with rising housing prices in the country are Washington, D.C. and the surrounding area and New York City. Well, the uh, the housing prices in Alaska haven't gone down like the rest of the country have. They haven't gone down like the rest of the country, but they're actually rising in uh, in the uh, the crime hubs of the, of the Western world. Well, I think there's a reason why, especially particularly here in the borough, why our housing prices supposedly don't go down. You artificially inflate the prices so your local borough government can inflate your taxes. They don't have to raise taxes. They just say your property is worth more, and you end up paying more, amazingly so. Well, let me, let me ask you this. In terms of uh, we're looking at the national scene, how does it affect this here in Alaska? They, they do, so what if they raise the debt ceiling? So what if they issue more quantitative easing, as they call it, and they inject more money into the economy? So what? 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 what how does that impact us? Energy prices, food prices, uh, all, all the prices of things people buy will go up faster than their wages, as they as they have been. You know, if you if you balance your budget or if you look at your your income to expenditures, that becomes obvious that that's been happening. And of course, you know, people up here go, "Oh, well, we're in Alaska. It's it's different up here. It, it's not different here." Well, to assume that we're safe in Alaska from anything that happens down the states is ridiculous because I think we all remember seven or eight years ago. I know we brought it up before when they had the longshoremen strike, and Fairbanks ran out of supplies very very quickly. We are very interdependent with the lower 48 with food um, basic household necessities we have no manufacturing here of our own obviously we basically just have oil and a little bit of coal and even that's hard to get out of the ground because of the same federal government that's causing the problems that are in the lower 48 right now basically what Alaskans need to do and I know we've had people call up and say, well, what do you guys are always complaining? What do you say we do? Well, it's not really easy, but the best thing to do if you can't affect your national government, which I don't think there's any real way to affect the natural, national government from where we sit, is to try to affect your local government. If you can't affect your state government, then try to affect your borough government. If you can't affect your borough government, try to affect your city government. If you can't affect your city government, try to affect your neighborhood. If you can't affect your neighborhood, at least go talk to your neighbor. We need to get back to what they were doing two, three hundred years ago when you knew your neighbor. Your neighbor could count on you. You could count on him. You're all on the same page. Sure, you don't have to agree on everything. But in a crisis situation, which 
Folks, it's not that far out of reach to think that we're going to be in a crisis, financial crisis especially. You should have people to count on. You should store up a little bit of food, store up a lot of bullets, store up a couple guns. Be prepared. doesn't hurt ever. That's a perfect segue to our first ad today and talk about Far North Tactical for just a moment, if I may. Far North Tactical, of course, over there, the old Blondies building downtown in 8th and Lacey, where you can go to get exactly some of those items, the bullets, the guns, the body armor, something that Josh didn't mention. Uh, The idea of preparedness, uh, it all depends on what you think you need to be prepared for. I mean, if you think that the worst that we're going to see happen is another longshoreman strike, and we might go a couple of days without getting our McDonald's burgers, then you're not going to prepare like somebody who thinks that we might see a a Katrina-like disaster where the local government simply falls apart, and we might have weeks or months without any law enforcement. What's that going to be like? Have you ever thought about what that would be like if you had people literally just taking what they wanted from the stores or from your neighbors or coming and trying to do the same from you? Uh, have you? Have you thought about what actions you would take? Because especially if there's nobody to call to come rescue you, then either you need to make peace with the fact that you're going to have all of your stuff taken away from you or to be killed in the process, or you're going to have to come to grips with the idea of defending yourself, defending your family, defending your home, and obviously, I mean, we've seen the uh, the increasing number of poor decision makers that have been out there lately and, and the kinds of things that they've been doing in terms of uh, home invasions. I mean, just this last week, there are those three teenage punks that in the space of uh, just a couple of hours, they robbed, I think, six or seven people downtown Fairbanks. And I, I don't know if you heard about this. These three teenagers, two 17-year-olds and, and a one 16-year-old kid, using nothing more than their fists, they accosted one guy behind uh, the Tanana Chiefs. He didn't have any money, so they beat him up. They went on and they costed two other guys behind Fred Meyer, and they uh, they didn't have any money, so they beat them up, and they beat them up so badly they were kicking them when they were on the ground. Now, obviously, these gentlemen were not prepared to defend themselves uh, against a couple of teenagers. Uh, I'm not going to mock that because, you know what, If especially if you're older and you've got some teenage punk coming at you, I mean, if you're not prepared to defend yourself, you're going to find yourself the victim. So if you want to be the victim, I can't help you. If you want to be prepared to defend yourself and your family, then I need to recommend that you head on over there to Far North Tactical, the corner of 8th and Lacey, the old Blondie's building, and check out what they've got for you. How's that? Did I do you justice? That's pretty good. All right. Did they, uh, that little story you just said about those three guys, were there any witnesses to it? Uh, they were the, I think there were, yes, a couple of witnesses that were able to tell the police about it. Uh, from what I understand, I don't have the story in front of me. I, th- I suppose I could look it up Who if you want to talk more about it. Who stood around and watched it happen? or I, I think in the case of uh, the one of them by the Tanana Valley uh, Chiefs building, it was uh, a distance thing where they saw it happening, but they were far away from it. Hmm. But either way, yeah, I mean, how many people do you know that will step out and stand up for somebody who's getting beaten? Well... well how many times do we see on the television or reading the news how uh, someone gets the crud beat out of them in a subway or something and everyone just sits there and takes pictures and posts it on YouTube and stands around? That's that's the problem. Or get to the real issue and how many times have you read in the paperwork somebody did step in to help and they got prosecuted by the state? Yeah, you know, that happens too. Yeah. That happened just recently. The guy that stuck around uh, witnessed... Uh, accident on the i don't remember what road it was here in town and then mm-hmm. stayed around for hours and hours and finally had to go and he did and he got arrested he, he was kept he, it wasn't that he just stayed around he was kept there as a witness they wouldn't allow him to leave and then finally when he had to relieve himself they arrested him for public urination